You have data for different locations for which you want to find the latitude and longitude coordinates, or maybe the reverse, you have the coordinates and you want to find the corresponding addresses. Then you can do this in a super easy way using Power BI and the Google Geocoding API. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how it works. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. So let's talk about how you can find the latitude and longitude coordinates for a certain location. Well, actually, it's super easy. Now, you could go to Bing Maps or Google Maps, type in a location, and then if you look at the URL, then you will see the latitude and longitude coordinates. Now, there are also tons of different websites that you can use to do the reverse, and then copy that over to the data set where you need it. However, this is a lot of work and effort if you have to do it for thousands of different locations. And that's where an API could help out. Now, the one that we are going to look at is the Google Geocoding API. But of course, we need some sample data to work with. So let's connect to that data first. I have an Excel workbook, so let's connect to an Excel workbook. So in this sample file, I have two tables. The first one contains a list of cities for which we want to find the latitude and longitude data. And then later on, we're also going to do the reverse. So then we need a table where we just have the latitude and longitude data and we want to find the corresponding addresses. All right, so I'm going to select both of them, then click on transform data, and that brings us to Power Query. So here we need to create a custom function that is going to do the geocoding for us using that Google geocoding API. Now, as a starting point, we go to the website mapsplatform.google.com. And here we see all of the different products, and the one that we want is the geocoding API. So let's click on that one. And here, to get started, we go to get started. All right, then if you scroll down just a little bit, then here you see how to connect to the API using that URL that we can copy over. So I'm going to copy it, go back to Power BI, and here we are going to connect to a new source, which is going to be a web source. Now that URL that we just copied, we can paste in over here, and here at the end you see your API key, so we will need a key in a second, but for now we just click on OK, and there you go, we have an error message because the provided API key is invalid. So we need to first get the API key before we can use the API, of course. Now, where to get it? Let's go back to the documentation of the API. Now here on the left-hand side, you see all of the setup instructions and also how to get the API key. So first you go here to setup in Cloud Console, and here you just have to go through all of the different steps, it takes a couple of minutes, and the first step is going to be to create a new project. So click on it, and then create your project. So for example, we could call this one Power BI Geocoding Example. Then click on Create. And once you have the project, you go to the next step. So I go back to the documentation, scroll down a little bit. And then the next step, well, we need to create a billing account in case you don't have one yet. Yes, a billing account. It costs money to use that API on a pay-as-you-go basis. However, there's a free trial and you can get some free credit to get started with this API. So once you have the billing account, you need to, of course, enable the billing, and then all the way at the end, enable the API. Once you add that last step where you enable the geocoding API, then here you also see the pricing. Now at the moment it costs $5 for 1000 requests. So once the cloud console is set up, then you can get the API key. So then here on the left hand side, you go to using API keys, and then scroll down a little bit and follow over here the go to the credentials page. And on the credentials page, there you can click on create credentials, API key, and this is the key that you can copy over and use to connect to the geocoding API. Now, make sure that you don't share it with just anybody because it is connected to your credit card, all right? So I'm going to copy that. I'm back in Power Query, I'm going to create a parameter which you can do here from the home tab and then manage parameters, new parameter. And then over here, I'm going to call this one API key. And then here we want to have type as text and then the current value there, I'm going to paste my API key. Then we go back to that query that we created before where we want to connect to the API. And then we can go to the source tab and click on edit. Now from here, we can switch to advanced. And here the first part is going to be that link to the API. And the second part is going to contain the key. Now here, I want to be able to choose parameter. If you don't see parameter, then what you need to do is go back, click on view, 
and make sure that here for parameters is always allow. All right, so back to the source editing step, click on advanced, and then here I'm going to choose for the second part, the parameter that we just created. And then for the first part, well here that ending, and we don't need your API key, we can take that out. And then it basically ends then with the API key. All right, click on okay. And now there's no error message, everything is okay. And then we can go to the last step, huh. doesn't work. Well, let's just delete that change type step, we don't need it. I see everything is fine. All right, so here we have the results column, which is of course the interesting one. And let's expand that column. And over here, I'm going to deselect original column name as prefix. And the only thing that we really need here is the formatted address I would like to see and the geometry information. Then click on OK. And then we have the full address and still another column with an asset record. So we expand that again. And from here, we want to have only the location information. And then one last time, we have to expand now the location column, and then we get the latitude and longitude. All right, so this is basically it. However, now we are doing it for that sample address that we got from the Google documentation. And well, it's not a function yet that we can apply to any location. So that's going to be the next step. Now a custom function lets us apply all of these steps against any location. And if you like, we can also add additional steps, right? So over here, we can remove over here the status column. We don't necessarily need that one. Maybe you also want to name the latitude and longitude a little bit different. Huh? So you could capitalize lat. And then here for longitude, I would like to have LON, all right? So you add all of the steps that you want your custom function to perform. Now, once that is done, then we have to go to view advanced editor, and here we can now turn it into a function. Now the interesting part happens over here with the API connection, which you find there for web.contents. I'm going to place it over three different lines. So here, I'm gonna place it on the next line, and the first part doesn't change, all right? But here, after address is equal to, there we need, of course, the address, okay? And I'm going to put that on the next line, so here, let me just put there an ampersand, press enter so that it goes on the next line. Here we have then the address, and then there at the end, we have the API key. All right, now here, just make sure that that ampersand, uh, that original ampersand stays, all right? So we, here we need an additional one. This goes to the next line, and then quotation mark to start off with, and then over here, the API key at the end. All right, so these three parts. Now, the part that is going to change all the time is here the location. So instead of this mountain view address, we are going to put in the different city names. All right, so I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to put over here the location, which is going to be a variable, all right? And that variable needs to be plugged in right here. But then at the beginning, we can define the variable. So we can say that we have a variable called location and it gets provided in the form of text. And then to turn this into a function, we have the goes to operator, an equal sign and a bigger than sign. And that's basically it. So here we take the location and this location is then filled in to the URL and then it will find the latitude and longitude data for that location. That's it. Let's click on, uh, on done. Now, before we're going to test it, let's then also rename it. So over here, I'm going to rename it to get lat long. Okay, so get latitude and longitude data. And then we go to the table with the list of cities for which we want to test it. And here we can add a new column, invoke the custom function. And then we can give this a name. So over here, we have then the lat longitude data that we get. And the function that we want to run is get long a latitude and longitude data. All right. Then here we just have one column with all of the cities. That's going to serve as the input for the function. All right. So let's click on OK. And you probably will get a pop up information is required about data privacy. Now, because we're just testing it, we don't care too much. And I'm just going to ignore it. Of course, it's an important topic. However, that's probably a topic for a different video. So for now, I'm just going to ignore it. Click here on save. And we have a new column, latitude, longitude with nested tables. Now, if we click in the blank space right next to one of them, you will see here at the bottom, we have the formatted address, latitude, longitude data for that specific city. Perfect. Now we just need to expand it. 
Now also here, I would not select use original column name. So deselect that one, leave everything else as it is, click OK. And there you go. We have the latitude and longitude coordinates. Now something to be aware about is that it might be that the API returns, well, more than one line for a certain location. For example, for Brussels, Belgium, we have two entries. We have over here latitude and longitude data, quite close, but it's just a little bit different. It's just because it had more information about Brussels. Okay, so how can we make sure that we just have that first entry? Well, we can just slightly adjust the function that we created. So I go back here to the function and then here to view advanced editor. And what I wanna do is just to make sure that it only returns that first result. Now here to do that, sometimes you might want to change it back to a normal query so that you see what is happening. So I'm going to comment this out. So control pound lets you comment it out. So you put manually these two forward slashes. And then the same thing I can do here for location. And then here I take that uh, original sample address that was there and click on done. So now we basically reversed the function into a normal query that returns a table, all right? And why am I doing this? Because now I can, in an easy way, add a new step. Uh, so I go here to the home tab and here I just wanna make sure uh, that it keeps only the first top row. So keep top rows. I only wanna keep the first one, click okay. And now I turn it back into a function. So view, advanced editor. And then here we make it a function again. So I'm going to comment that sample address out, click on done, and now it's a function again. So now if I go back to the original table with all of the cities, then you will see there for Brussels, we only have one line. Perfect, so that problem is solved. So that's basically it. So now I can take all of these columns and assign the right data type. So the data type, make sure that the latitude and longitude data is there as decimals. And that's how easy it is to get the latitude and longitude data for many different locations. But what if you want to do the reverse? So now I go to that second table over here and here we have only the latitude and longitude data. We don't have any information about the addresses. Now, how can you do the reverse? I go back to the documentation and let's see what we find there. So we are back at the beginning. I go to get started and I just scroll down, 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 down until you get to reverse geocoding request and response. All right, so here, again, a URL that we can copy and we basically follow the same steps. So here we can go back to the home tab, new source, connect to web. Now here I want to have advanced and just paste it in here. Now, here we have the API key already from before. So I'm going to remove it from the first part and then put in the parameter. Click here on OK. And you see that the API returned more than one line for that latitude and longitude pair that we provided. Now the addresses you find here in the formatted address column. And the first one is the most detailed one. The last one is just saying United States, but it's basically all for that same latitude and longitude pair. All right, now we have to find a way to turn this again into a function. All right, so over here, I'm just going to go to expanded results all the way back to the beginning. And the first result is the most detailed result. So I'm going to click on the first record, click here on continue. And you see all of the following steps then get deleted. And here I just have that first result. Now from that, I just want to have the formatted address. Now, how can we get the formatted address? Let's insert a new step. And then in the formula bar, after results, I'm going to add square brackets. And I want to have the formatted address with an underscore just like it's written here. All right, click on enter and we get the address. Perfect, it is working for the sample. Now we have to convert it into a function. And to do that, I go back to view, advanced editor. And here we can follow the same steps as before, but now we have two input parameters. We have the latitude and the longitude. So to make this a function, I'm going to have the square brackets to define my parameters. We want to have latitude and longitude. And here I'm not going to define the data type, okay? Because whether it's a text or a decimal number, it still needs to work. So I'm not going to define the data types of the input parameters. And here for the source, the interesting part is that URL to the API. The beginning part stays as it is. And then where it gets interesting is where we have to put in the coordinates. And I'm going to put that on the next line. All right, and then the same thing for the key. I put that on the next line. Now remember for the key, it's important that you don't forget that ampersand sign over there. 
And here for the latitude and longitude, this is what we need to change. Now here, I just want to refer to these two variables that we define up there. So lat and long, that comma in the middle needs to in be in between quotation marks and to combine it with the variables, we need the ampersands. All right, now here latitude and longitude needs to be text when it uh, flows into the URL. And to make sure that that is the case, we have to say text from bracket open and wrap the latitude and longitude inside of that function text dot from. All right, so I do that for both. And after this, our function is done again. So let's click on done and give it a good name. And so here I'm going to rename it to get address like this. Then we go to the table with the latitude and longitude data. And here we can run the function row by row by going to add column and invoke the custom function. Over here, we can call this one location. And then the query that we want to use is get address, where we can just choose the latitude and the longitude columns as inputs. Click on OK. And boom, there you go. We have all of the addresses, just like this. Now, maybe good to know is that if we go back to the function get address and then view advanced editor, then over here at the end, there is a zero. Now, this zero means that it returns the first address that the API found for the latitude and longitude pair, which is the best one. If we increase that one, so let's say we go for five, we get the less detailed one. And the higher the number, so I believe in the sample it was, for example, 13, then we only get the United States, right? So only the country was returned. So over here, you can play around with this number to get a less detailed um, information about the latitude and longitude pair. Or what you can also do is just clean it up now. So if I only want to have the country, I could, for example, add additional steps to the query by going here to add column. And then here I want to, let's say, extract text after the delimiter. And I only want to have, let's say, the country. So the delimiter is comma. And here on the advanced, I can say from the end of the input. All right. And then we have a list of all of the countries. So now we can do the geocoding in two ways, from the location field to latitude and longitude, but also the reverse, latitude and longitude to an address. Well, as the next step, we can load the tables to our data model and build the visualizations. So I go here to home and click on close and apply. And as an example, we can take the symbol map and add it to a report. Then let's say we want to take that first example where we had the cities and added the latitude and longitude data. Then here, always make sure that you also assign the data category. And so for latitude, well, that's obviously latitude. And for longitude, it's longitude. As well, I make sure that these are formatted as decimals and the summarization is set to don't summarize. And now you can use latitude and longitude data on your visual. So just drag and drop it into the corresponding rows. And because we have the latitude and longitude data now in our data set, the map visual doesn't need to send the location data to Bing Maps for the geocoding. And that saves a little bit of loading time. So it could speed up everything. That is also the recommendation that Microsoft gives you. Add latitude and longitude values to your data set. This removes any ambiguity and returns results more quickly. So this is how you can set it up using the Google Geocoding API. Now, of course, there are many other APIs that you could use. However, to set it up, it probably follows a similar logic. Now, if you want to know more about how you can now use that location data on different map visuals, then check out these videos over here. If you have any questions, just post them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one.